morning. I'm here with my scientific co-founder, Vasan Yegna Subramanian, and we're seeking seed round funding for Brahmastra. Uh, the name references the most powerful weapon in Hinduism. Um, and what the company is designed to do is to build new epigenetic treatments that can be given alone or in combinations, very specific combinations, using a company's proprietary platform and the principle of synthetic lethality. That's when two things are combined to be extra lethal. And uh, <clears throat> we hope we're going to find drugs of much greater therapeutic index and much improved. The scientific founders are experts in cancer medicine and cancer science, and along with Sashank Reddy from Johns Hopkins Technology Ventures, some expertise in company formation. So all cancers are fundamentally disorders of acquired defects in genes and in gene function. In genes we call genetics, in gene function we call epigenetics. And these collaborate together to create the malignant cells that can spread throughout your body and threaten life. What's particularly interesting is, of course, many of these uh, the protein products of the defective genes have been targeted with small molecule and other drugs. You've heard about some of these ideas here. Oftentimes you can get a response, but almost inevitably that response is short in duration, the cancer progresses because there are so many other alterations that aren't targeted. Interfering with epigenetic processes gives you the possibility of perhaps restoring the function of thousands of genes at once becomes very attractive. Probably conceptually the best notion of this is the idea that you'd interfere or some way reverse abnormal DNA methylation. That's propensity for the cytosine base C to carry a methyl group. When this alteration is acquired in the regulatory region of genes like tumor suppressor genes, it results in gene suppression. So let's take a real world example. You can take a disease like colorectal cancer, 15 to 30% of colorectal cancers are appear to be particularly addicted to this methylation gene silencing. They're called the CPG island methylator phenotype or SIMP. They have an abysmal prognosis almost at any stage, and they're poorly treated with any one of a number of drugs that are out there at the moment. The current epigenetic drugs, there are a few that have been FDA approved. They have very limited indications, and most of them don't work very well for solid organ cancer, certainly not for colorectal cancer. And the reason for that almost certainly is that uh, they just don't have a good enough therapeutic index at the doses we use to administer them. One slide behind, we're one behind, sorry. They just don't have uh, good enough at the uh, the, the doses that we use them. And so we need drugs with higher therapeutic index, better activity, and, and, and better safety. The good news is that there are a number of epigenetic targets that really haven't been explored in detail yet, really quite a few of them, and I'm here to tell you about one of them, which is the reader protein, MBD2. It turns out it's necessary for a gene carrying this methylation kind of aberration to be silenced. Um, if you knock the gene out, um, of mice, they do pretty well, but they can't form polyps when you cross them to mice that are prone to uh, intestinal polyps like the familial polyposis syndrome. This gives the possibility, if you could mimic this with a drug, that you could take care of cancer altogether, perhaps. Now, we did do a, 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 a you know, public library screen of inhibitor compounds, and what we found is that we can find compounds that inhibit MBD2, its ability to be execute its reader function, and do so very selectively, in fact, surprisingly so. So they interfere with MBD2 and not other related compounds. The reason for this almost certainly is that they act, we believe, allosterically. We are pursuing structural biology and biophysical assessment of this to get a detailed knowledge of how this works. This suggests that you can make drug-like compounds that target this molecule. The inhibitors themselves provide some provocative hints at what they might do. We lent this out to somebody who works on medulloblastoma. He'd knock the gene out and you can attenuate medulloblastoma growth. The drug that's brain penetrant mimics this property and interferes with medulloblastoma growth in the same model. We do have a, a, a tactic to go look and see which of the cancers are particularly addicted uh, to this DNA methylation type phenotype using a CRISPR-based tool. And you can see in this particular cell line uh, that uh, the knocking out MBD2 in this cell line is as effective as knocking out MYC. Uh, which is a very attractive target that's been very difficult to prosecute. Clinically, we think we can focus on things like familial adenomas polyposis. That's uh, an orphan drug kind of indication. It's very analogous to the model where we know knocking the gene out uh, restores normalcy. Um, we think we could chase after sporadic polyps. That would be a long-term goal. We think we can take on this uh, business of the SIMP kind of positive uh, colorectal cancer. It's 15 to 30% of the disease, and there, of course there may be other cancer indications. 
The colorectal cancer uh, marketplace is quite substantial. As you can see, it's very lucrative and very crowded with a number of drugs that don't work very well. Imagine a drug that can take 30% of this market and work particularly effectively. So what are we up to? We're up to some lead optimization, which we'd love to have the seed funding to take on. We need to build a drug-like molecule and uh, take it through Admetox uh, and get ready for clinical trials. The other thing is the company has access to a fairly large collection of intellectual property generated by the two scientific co-founders and their many collaborators, a couple of other first-in-class drug targets, and then some proprietary combinations. So with that, thank you for paying attention. I'll invite Vasan up here and we can answer questions. Thank you.